Hey everybody, what's up, and welcome back to more Chips Challenge, Josh L5. Now you may be wondering why on earth we're back here at the very beginning of the set. Well, I've got some great news. Josh sent me an updated version of this set so that I can continue playing with the latest versions of all the levels. Thing is, I don't exactly know what all the changes were that at least affected my solution, so I went back and did Shift-Tab, uh, on each of the levels so that Tile World could just skip to the end and see if there was any problems along the way. And if there were any problems, then my time will be grayed out. So let's just go through these. I don't really know what all was done in each of these, but let's see here. Uh, Reacher Grabber was the first one that had an issue, and apparently I had an issue with the bomb at the end. At the very end, too, just 10 seconds, so I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't really remember what my original solutions were. Um, Shattered Ice Temple, I believe the bust got fixed, so yeah, that's that solution's now obsolete. Burnt Electrical Wire, I don't really know what happened there. It looks like the ball cloner area, so I'm not sure why that's no longer possible, So at least with the solution I had. This level, Molasses and Black Marker, I guess, well, it looks like... I was able to get all the way to the end, so maybe some things moved around because those blocks are just kind of there. I'm guessing maybe I was able to just move around with the moves that defined my original solution until it ran out of time and realized, oh, you haven't exited yet, so there you go. So maybe some stuff moved around because I definitely did not push blocks into corners like that. Um, Lakes of Destiny, I don't really know what's up with this, but maybe it has to do with that upper left section that we really didn't do much with. Um, meanwhile, Chernobyl, I didn't even last a second on this one, so, yeah, I'm not really sure what the issue with this one was. Uh, let's see, you're the McCallahan. Yeah, I really don't know what the problem with this level was either. So, yeah, some things changed here that prevent the my solutions from being possible. This level, oh, there's a bomb there now? Okay, there's a bomb there now. That's interesting. Uh, jump forward ahead. The Railroad Madness level doesn't work anymore. Maybe the cloning timing was spaced out more or something. I don't really know. This one, I don't really know what the problem with this was. I guess maybe something changed as far as the layout's concerned. Maybe there was that ice and force four bit that was MS only that got changed. I'm not really certain. This one, I guess I couldn't go through that fire at the end. Maybe the fire boots get stolen somewhere. Multiple tank glitch. Oh, okay. I don't know what to say about that. I guess I guess now the tank is there instead of right by the exit. Maybe that's the, the problem with that. And I guess there's a bomb that I ran into on everything that drowns me. And that's it. So, no, I'm not actually going to go back and play through all those levels again with the latest versions. Because, I mean, you guys have gotten the gist of what they're about. And I solved a version of them. And they could still change down the road, too. So even if I were to play them right now, that's no guarantee that they would remain the same. So I'm just going to continue with the LP with the versions of the levels that are in this version of the set. And if the set gets updated, I'll mention what changed, if I know what it is. If not, then at least I'll try to speculate like I just did, because I don't have a list of changes with me. Also notable is that Josh added two new levels to the set toward the very end, so we've actually got 77 now. So with that in mind, let's get started on Electric Blue Fortress. This looks like a pretty cool level. Find a way through the fortress and deactivate the security system. I gotta turn the sound on, because I turned it off to prevent the death sound every time we did the control t or the shift tab. Um, oh, here we go. So not all of these are real. There are some fake ones. So I'm just going to go and test everything out to make sure nothing is missed. So the security system seems to be the uh, walkers. And I'm wondering how I'm supposed to... How is this, like, not busted in links? I mean, you can just put a block on the fire and block slap it from the right side, right? Although, this is kind of easy, with even if you didn't do that, so, yeah. It's not really a bust. I was kind of expecting a super hard Soko Band there. So, right here, do I get the fire boots and then go back here? 
because that allows me to extract all the blocks, but... See, the problem is, right now, if I were to get the fire boots, then I would have to lose them right there at the thief, which would make getting that yellow key useless. Unless I went in, or got the green key, sorry, I meant the green key. If I got the green key first, and then got the fire boots later, that might be the way to do this. So let's try that out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down here, like this, and then just slip this way. Alright, and it seems like I need to get the glider either up through one of these... I'm going to guess this one. This makes sense. And we need to turn it around by doing that. Okay, so now I need to actually go back. How am I supposed to do that in Lynx? I guess you would have to get the chip on the way back in Lynx. Interesting. Okay, so we got that done now. Now the question is, what is up with that? I guess I would just go through the fire and then come back. That makes the most sense. Okay, now I've got this whole area here that I could probably explore, but do I want to do that right now? And do I want to open the door there right now? That's the other question. I don't think I really have any other choice, so let's just go and do it. This is a very interesting level. Like, I like these levels that involve breaking into something, because, I don't know, they, they just feel cooler. Like, I, I consider that part of the aesthetic when you're doing something like that. I tried doing that with a level in my latest set, it's called Jewel Heist, and uh, it kind of has this whole theme of having to get a red key, which I guess is supposed to represent a jewel, and like when you go for it then there would be teeth released that will attack you and stuff. It wasn't exactly the greatest thing in the world or anything, but I thought it was decent at least. I don't think it's as cool as this though. Now I'm wondering if I really did the right thing there. I don't really see any other way around it though. But let's go back. Oh, am I supposed to bring the blocks through there? I think I'm supposed to bring the blocks through there. I think that's it. Okay, now it makes a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and bring the blocks through there. Because, I mean, we don't need the uh, um, traps anymore. I mean, we, we've already taken care of that whole section. So let's just go ahead and turn these around, and I think we should be good. So, I'm kind of a little bit burned out right now, I gotta admit. I just finished playing uh, some Phase 10 with my family. I don't know if I've talked about playing Phase 10, but it's definitely become one of our favorite games to play. Uh, that and a game, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it on my channel or not, but it's a game called Seven Wonders. It's a European game. It's a strategy game that one of my friends taught me. And my family and I have kind of taken it up. Um... We've kind of haven't played it in a while, though, but it was definitely a favorite of ours when we first got it. But it's one of those games that seems complicated, but when you learn it, it's actually not so bad. And it's actually a really fun game to play. Basically, you have to base kind of like build a city of sorts um, in one of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient Worlds cities. It's really fun, and like you play certain cards to build buildings and whatnot. I think it's a blast, personally. So, it looks like we have to partial post this, maybe? Okay, I'm guessing partial post first, and then... Yeah, I exit through the recess wall, come back, and then, then I push the blocks back, I think. Yeah, because I can just push that down. Okay, got it. So, that brings me to my question of the day, and I don't know if I've asked this one already, but if and if I have, do forgive me. What is your favorite non-video game game? Like, board game, card game, you know, whatever. And now I'm wondering, how do I extract all of this after I'm done? Because I, I, if I put these here... Oh, wait, no, I, I just... Hang on, I'm doing this wrong. Wait, did I just completely mess this up because I can't turn that around? Did I really just do that? Really? Did I just do that? Because, yeah, I can't do that now. Okay, 
Let's start all over. Let's do this again. Again, the good news is, is that we know what we're doing, so this will go by a lot faster. And it will give me a chance to test out what I was wondering about earlier with the whole Lynx force floor issue. Although now I'm not really sure if I can do this part after I push the blocks that way, but hopefully we there's no harm done. It doesn't look like it, so it looks like we're good. There we are. So yeah, what is your favorite border car game? Right now, I'm definitely a big Seven Wonders fan. It's been great. It looks like I do need to go in to... Okay, I can just go here. Okay, yeah, I can just get the fire boots later. Like, that's totally no big deal. Okay, so let's just do this now and let him do his thing. Oh, I gotta actually do that. Okay. So then on the way back, I can just do this, go in here, and yeah, okay. That's how you do it in Lynx. It's pretty cool. I like the fact that there's multiple ways you can do that. So now we have the blue wall maze. I guess the other nice thing about starting over is now that we've pretty much figured this section out, we've got a lot more time, which is always a nice advantage to have in a long level like this. And I think that's all we can do, so let's go back. Sorry if that ticking net noise is kind of a little bit annoying, but personally I like the Tile World ticking noise a lot better than the Microsoft's uh, Ships Challenge ticking noise. Like that one, I mean there's a certain nostalgic charm to it, but at the same time it's just very pointy. It's just like, it, it, I don't know, it just sounds really, well I guess this one does too technically, but maybe it's just that this one's different and I just got so used to that one after a while. Or maybe it's just the fact that I've got one headphone on and not the other one. That's one of my things about recording. Like, I don't like wearing both headphones to hear the sound. I just like wearing one headphone. Because, personally, I think my voice sounds kind of a little weird when I don't have anything on. Okay, that just sounded strange. But, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those weird things. Like, I feel like I'm way too loud when my ears are covered up and whatnot. I know that just sounds like a really strange hang-up, but it's one of those things, you know. So now... Okay, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. Okay, I just put this here. That's all I need to do, and then I just put the other one through. Okay, I was just doing that wrong. Incorrectly. Incorrectly. Wrong is not an adverb. Incorrectly is. Alright, let's go into this tank area. Um, I guess I do that? Oh, that allows me access to the toggle button. Okay. Oh, I see what you have to do. Clever. Okay. So all I have to do is just turn them around and then push... Okay. That's cool. I like little mechanisms like that. Like, they're simple, but when you see that, you're like, ah, oh, you know, that, I see what you're doing there. You know, that's pretty fun. Okay, I don't want to lose my boots, so I'm not going to step on that thief. Okay, do I want to go in the fire area yet? Let me just kind of window shop that. It looks like... I may want to bring blocks or something up here, but I don't know if I can do that. And I'm not sure if I can come back from this. It looks like this is kind of a point of no return type thing. So you know what? I think I am going to do this. So the question now is, what goes where? Okay, it seems like the bug should go here, but I have to do the fireball first. So the fireball... Okay, the bug will fall to left fall, so he'll automatically go left. So we have to do that. I mean, thankfully the game makes this pretty easy. What? Really? Okay, I'm sorry, but that's kind of a little mean. That's kind of a little mean. I mean... 
I, I'm no expert on trap behavior. I mean, I haven't really had to deal with it much lately, but that's... That requires a level of knowledge of trap behavior that, honestly, most people shouldn't be expected to have. I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but... In Lynx, that wouldn't even be an issue, so I would pretty much rail against this purely on the basis of being unequal alone, but really, that's that's kind of a little unfair. I'm sorry to say so, but that's not cool. Okay, let's just do this again. So yeah, how do you do that then? I mean, it seems like you have to tackle that room before you do anything else, because you can't come back there. So I'm assuming that there's no extra tools that you need to actually do anything more in there, uh, or do it correctly, rather. Nor really can there be. I mean, there's no boot-sensitive areas. I mean, there's fire, but I, I don't think you need to go into the fire, right? Wait, did I go up here earlier? I don't know if I went up there earlier, so maybe this... Maybe it was a good idea that I started over. Yeah, I don't remember getting all these chips earlier, so yeah. Good thing I actually did this, because I think I would have been screwed over just on that alone, pretty much. Okay, so let's bring all the blocks up and redo this section again. We're learning, though. That That's the good part. You know, at least we... At least this level is linear enough, but yet straightforward enough that when you redo something, you don't really have to remember a lot of steps. I mean, compare this to... I know I promised I wouldn't talk about You're the McCallahan again, but I'm going to again. Like, that level had a lot of different areas that you could go to, even though the solution was linear. And in that regard, it kind of represented CCLP3 in a lot of ways. Because it had a lot of those sorts of levels where you had different paths that you could take, but really there was only one correct thing to do. And it would be very difficult to decipher what that one correct thing to do was when there were so many options from which to choose. So I'm going to push this there, leave this here, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I was making this out to be so complicated. Still, a little more leeway in here would have been nice. Alright. Let's get this part done. I'm just going to go ahead and turn them around just to get them ready. I kind of have this OCD thing about pressing all the blue walls I can press. That's one thing I, I'm not a big fan of with levels where there are walls you can't reach like that. I can't press them and they're always going to be blue. Which is kind of a bummer. Okay, so how to handle this. I mean, I'm wondering, does the bug go up? Because I honestly don't see any other way this is possible. I mean, I really don't. I can't get the chip. I mean, that doesn't seem to be doable. Yeah, I mean, let's let's try it. No, I can't move him. I mean, it's impossible. So how do I do this? I mean, how am I supposed to do this? Wait, what does that clone button do? I don't know. I, I really do not know how to do this. And I'm guessing that ball there is a controller. I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, I mean, th that seems to always be... Well, unless you're just supposed to release them both. Maybe that's the solution. You're supposed to release them both at the same time. I was kind of banking that whole attempt on seeing if the bug would actually go up in Microsoft, but it looks like it's a matter of releasing them both at the same time now. I mean, there doesn't seem to be any other way to do this. So yeah, let's try this again. Let's do this again. So what should I talk about while we're doing this again? I mean, I want to keep this fun and interesting, so I don't want to be moaning all this time about this level, so... Let's see what we got here. I'm recording this on July uh, 2nd, or excuse me, 3rd, not July 2nd, July 3rd. So tomorrow is Independence Day. I don't really have any particular plans. 
Um, mainly just because my family is not really a big fireworks um, family. I mean, we I'm not either, to be honest. I guess I just... I've seen so many good fireworks shows that honestly most fireworks shows around here just kind of pale in comparison. And even if they were that good, I mean... Fireworks are fireworks. I mean, I've seen lots of fireworks, and I don't really need to see any more fireworks. I mean, I can just watch fireworks on TV if I wanted to see fireworks. So, I don't know. It's I guess fireworks just aren't really my thing. So, I might have some friends over um, Sunday night, maybe, because it seems like everyone's doing something for the weekend. On Saturday, I think I'm going to be going to see a movie with somebody. I'm, I'm going to be seeing that movie Earth to Echo that's coming out. I don't really know much about it, but it looks like an 80s style sci-fi movie, which in my book is always a good thing. Well, maybe not always, but it's typically a good thing. I guess I'm just one of those nostalgic people. Like, the other day, okay, I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but I discovered, or rediscovered, rather, this game that I had stumbled across as a kid named I know this is going to sound really generic, but it was just called Ball Game 2. That's all it was called. It was just called Ball Game 2. I don't know if there was a Ball Game 1 or what, but it was basically this kind of Chips Challenge style game where you were this rolling ball, kind of like in something like Marble Madness or something akin to that. And you had to roll across this, you know, little landscape. It wasn't really big because the game, it was a DOS game. I mean, it wasn't really all that big or anything. But it was made in that, you know, shareware European demo scene era, you know, where people made little demos and advertised the full version that you could buy. Well, the version of this game that was pretty much released was the full version, even though they called it the demo. Because, as far as I know, there was no full version. And the levels themselves were pretty difficult, um, mainly just because the game mechanics were just kind of hard to control. And grasp. I mean, you didn't even have to reach the edge of the screen, and the ball would just bounce really hard if you were pretty close to the edge. Which, you know, that sort of thing is something I kind of consider unfair, but it definitely made things more interesting. Okay, I'm gonna get this now. And I'm gonna open both. There. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier, but oh well. All right, let's go ahead and go through here. I'm guessing this is just another one of those chip collecting blue wall areas. Of course, <laughs> I shouldn't have expected that to work. Anything down here? Okay, I just wanted to try that blue wall just to see if I had to free the walkers so I can get to something over on the other side, but it looks like that's not the case, so let's go through here now. Okay, this looks like a cloner that I have to use, and I'm going to need to clone enough blocks to make it over to the other side and then come back for that blue key. Alright, doable. I just hope I do not have to go through the entire level all over again. That would just be annoying. Okay, do I have to, like... Is this, like, a compaction thing? Because I can't really get through here, right? Well, technically I could, but I don't think I would really be able to do much if I did do that, so... Yeah, let's just do that. This worries me. Okay, good. It's just a straight path down. <laughs> I was really concerned there for a minute. Um, well, do I go down or left? Or does it even really matter if I go down or left? I'll go down. Wait, was I supposed to not get that red key and then go through... Really? Really? Yep, yep, I failed. I totally failed because of that little trap at the end. You know, I can understand that sort of thing being in a level like Zelgon's Lair. But seriously now, this sort of thing, being at the end of a really long level, is just unfair. Maybe not so much unfair as it is just mean. I mean, seriously, that, that is just mean. 
I'm sorry to say so, but it just is. So, looks like we'll get to play through this all over again, guys. So yeah, ball game two. Let, let's talk more about that. I know that I know this game is probably sounding really boring and silly to you guys, but it was such a big part of my childhood, and I loved it to death. I remember there was a level I, I re-downloaded it for DOSBox the other day because I found like it on some random DOSBox collection you know website online, and I found some other games from my childhood there. I might LP some of these in the future, by the way. If you if that sounds if that sounds interesting, if you want to see something you know more retro stuff, let me know because I definitely am planning on at least a couple of games from that era um, that I grew up with. But if you guys want to see more, I mean, let me know. But um, I downloaded it the other day. I haven't really gotten to the point where I was at before because there's various level packs you can play, and I think I beat one or two of them as a kid. And, you know, I'm, talk I'm talking like really little kid here, like five, six years old. I I'm thinking, I, I want to say five at least. But um, the one thing that this game was good at, despite the fact that it was a very limited game that just had hardly any elements at all, it just had like, you know, walls, bombs that you could use to blow up stuff, like other walls, and gems to collect, kind of like the Chips and Ships Challenge and Exits to Exit. I mean, that was pretty much all the game was. Oh, and arrows, kind of like force floors. They were kind of similar. Other than that, I don't think there was really anything else to do in the game. I mean, they had, like, floor tiles that looked different, but that was kind of it. Just stylized floor tiles, and that was all. So... The level that I remember having the most trouble with, I got stuck on, and I couldn't escape from as a kid. I want to say it was called, like, Abracadabra or something like that, and involved this force floor joyride type thing that was just really hard to navigate. Because unlike Ship's Challenge, in that game, the force floors carry you on even more, even after they change direction. So you have to basically counteract the force floors by moving yourself. Um... Or through another force floor that just moves in the opposite direction. So yeah, it, it's it's a really strange game as far as mechanics are concerned. But it was one of those things that was just kind of a part of my childhood that I'll always remember. And I know it just sounds like a really silly game that you could just download for free now for a mobile phone. Really? Did I just do that? Did I just do that? Oh. Okay, that one was on my that that was that was on my that was my bad. Uh, I was trying to say that was on me and that was my fault at the same time. Do you ever do you ever do that like where you I think I talked about this before where you say two things at the same time basically, kind of and then you say this weird hybrid. Yeah, I have that problem. I guess my brain just works in a weird way or something. I don't know. But now we get to speedrun this level because we've gotten so used to it now. Yay! I, I still like this level. I just wish they it didn't have that death trap at the end. That that was kind of a little mean. I should have known something was up though when I saw that choice there between the recessed walls. And really, I should have this whole section memorized by now. I mean, how many times have we played through this already? This is like the sixth time. I think this is like the sixth time now. Maybe even the seventh time. Well, in all fairness, I will say this. That we definitely deserve a level like this because we've had too many easy ones lately. I mean, we've, we've been... We've been... Um, going at it pretty fast with the last few videos, so we needed a level that slowed us down. I mean, one of these every once in a while really isn't too bad. I mean, it really isn't. It's just that string of levels around the 30s that was really tough. So, Josh is planning to re-release this set publicly when he gets to 100 levels, and I know he doesn't like this idea, but personally, I think one thing that would be very helpful in getting to that 100 levels is to include some of the JCCLP levels that have not been assigned to a Josh L set yet. 
For those who don't know, JCCLP is Josh's best of set from with levels that were pulled from his other sets. So it makes sense that all of them should be from another one of his sets, and not just the, you know existent there. You know it. It just doesn't seem right just to have nothing, um, or to have something that doesn't appear anywhere else in a best of set, quote unquote. But maybe that's just me, I don't know. Plus, a lot of those levels are pretty simple, and they do balance out some of the, the more complicated ones here. So, personally, I think it would be a good move. And it would save a lot of time on his part, too. But, that's just a suggestion, and just my personal opinion. So, let's see. Um, all we can do here... So now we do the teeth block pushing thing. I wonder if it's possible like beat the teeth over here and then get a block cloned on you. That would be kind of mean if that were possible and you didn't even know about it. Although technically you can see everything so it is pretty much fair. Okay, so we go down here. Do not get that. Yeah, technically you can see that but I mean... I wouldn't really know that that's supposed to be the socket area, because you can't see the sockets. Okay, so now I go back through here now. Huh, okay. So now I get the suction. And I go back. What does this do? The trap button. I don't know. I can't move that either. Wait, I didn't push this. Okay, that's real. Okay, I just want to make sure. I, di I didn't want to miss anything. So let's go back. Now we get that. And dodging at the end. Oh, boy. Oh, it takes the pressure off that. Okay. That's a cool way to deactivate the security, quote-unquote. Nice. Okay, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Red with a twist. Is that the lyrics for uh, Colors for Extreme? I think it is. Okay, this looks interesting. Um, so what controls what? Does this control that? Okay, this controls that one. And this must control this one. Okay, and I need to get this. Seems like... So one of these will need to go into there, and the other one will need to go up there. Huh. So how do you... This is quite a conundrum. Alternatively, I could just blow up the one up there. I'd be really curious... I... Well, no, I can't backtrack if I press this, so that's not going to work. Hmm. I'm just thinking here, guys. Let's just experiment. I Oh, wow, that actually... Okay, that was interesting, but... Oh, it made both go... Okay, duh. Right. Okay. Well, maybe that's something we want to have happen. Question is, though... Okay, yeah, I released that one. Okay, got it. Got it. I, I think I got it. Okay, so let's try that again. Wait, no, can we, though? Because we can't hide anywhere. I mean, there's no place to hide. Okay, so how are you supposed to do this when you can't hide anywhere? I guess you have to get this then. I mean, there doesn't really seem to be any other way around that. And then get that. Hmm. I mean, I can do this. So it seems like I have to turn it around. Somehow I have to turn this around. But how? Mm. 
Okay, I'm going to try this again. Thankfully, this is just a 7x7 seven seven area, so I can easily look at everything. So, okay, let's just kind of go over what we know. What do we know? Okay, I'm just thinking here. I'm, I'm just thinking. I'm guessing that that's a block cloner, and that would trigger a block onto the button, which would allow us to get that key, and then the other buttons for the fire one. Um, yeah, I'm at a loss. I really don't know. Hmm. Let's just play around. I'm sure we'll find it. I mean, I can't press this and get out alive. There's no way that'll work, right? Unless I just wait for it to... Yeah, there we go. That's how you do it. That is how you do it. I think. Okay, so now we can get this, and now I can get through here, and then do that. Okay. Or, do that, rather. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Perfect. Alright, Red with a Twist is done. And I think we'll cap it off here, guys. We've done quite a bit in this video already, and it's been a while, so we'll end it right here for now. Sorry we weren't able to make more progress. I feel partially responsible for that. But hopefully we will in the next video, guys. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I really do appreciate all your views and support a lot. If you liked this video, be sure to like it on the channel by pressing that like button below, and I will see you on the flip side. Take care, guys, and I'll see you then.